Hi, I'm Angley Times editor Richard Lee, and I'm joined by Martin Bowler on the banks of the River Thames. Today we've got a big fish challenge. Tell us all about it, Martin. Well, today we're going to try and fish with chop worm, um, and then tomorrow I'm going to try and fish on the bread, both to catch big fish. Um, although I am a big fish angler, I'm actually going to use um, match fishing techniques because um, you know I don't like to burden myself with heavy lines and um, thick hooks in conditions that we're faced today. So I will be fishing on the pole, but I will be trying to target big perch, bream maybe, maybe a chub will come along and who knows, even a decent roach. Okay, well let's have a go. I reckon the, a three pound perch and a five pound chub is a good challenge. What, over the two days? Over the two days. All right, you got that. 20 quid. Martin, I thought you specimens only sat on silly green chairs. Good tip with chopworm and feeding lobworms is when you get them in these big bags, like hundreds of lobworms, empty all the earth, all the worms in, and I don't like to keep it in all this muck that they've been in, all this feces, everything else. So I want to clean them off. But saves carrying a riddle, put it in the landing net. Off. I've caught perch on this method up to five pound four ounces and uh, yeah I could sit on a low chair, fish with a quiver tip rod, specimen style but I have to be honest there is no finer way to catch perch up whole range than using a pole. If I quiver tip I won't catch as many fish so what do I have an option of looking like a specimen hunter or actually catching fish so I always opt for catching fish. Oh, I feel like I'm in the London Marathon, but I don't think I'm going to get a three pound perch up where I've been told. I think the water's too shallow and too fast. So I'm looking down in this place a bit deeper. Um, I think if I stood up there, stayed up there, I might get to chub, but today really is the perch mission. So um, you've always got to be prepared to move, no matter how much you suffer for it. And uh, I think it's going to be worth it. Well, I hope so. Um, no point sitting somewhere where you don't think you're going to get your target. I've moved swimmers now, and I've got a lot of deeper water out in front of me. Um, it is very pacey, a lot faster than um, the last swim. But I reckon there's about eight foot out there, and um, we're targeting perch today. Uh, you never know, we might pick one of those up, or we might pick up, oh, what's on the end here? A stick. Um, we might pick up uh, a chub or two. So I'm feeding the swimmer shot one. And um, I'm fishing with a very big flat float, which not many people fish with, but I love fishing with them. I suppose you could quiver tip, but um, I don't know if you can see if I swing it down. I swing it down to you. A very big flat float, that's 8 grams. Now, it's nothing compared with continental anglers, but for fishing in the UK, that's a lot, so it gives you an idea of the pace. And what a flat float does is it enables you to fish a static bait on the bottom with the finesse um, of a float instead of a quiver tip. And um, the way I set it up, there's an 8 gram olivet there, you have to definitely take it to the final float. And then I have two, it's very fast today, so two number six um, on the bottom, just slightly spread so they grip, and the lob worm. And when you put your flat float out, you'll know it's right if it cocks and sits straight up sits to the left or to the right you've either got it too heavy or too light 
um, and that's very important. But it's a deadly way of fishing because you guarantee you're on top of the chop worm. And you can also make the worm dance. You can just lift it, just twitch it back. Um, I wouldn't fish any other way within pole distance, 13, 14 metres for a big perch. Um, we'll also be feeding some chop worm. I've put a couple of droppers out. I'll keep putting them out through the afternoon. And let's see what turns up. Right, you notice from a float, if I lift it up a little bit, it's very long antennae on there. And it's a double antennae. And the reason I have that in fast floats like this is I can overshot the flat float, as you can see, and it's just settling down, and it will just sit down to the orange tip. And that way my float gets under all the surface turbulence and remains a lot steadier. Um, don't worry that there's quite a bit showing of the orange still left um, because there's very little resistance it's a very thin stem and that'll easy shoot under with especially with such a large bait I'm using half a lob worm right this is the feed that I'm putting in worm a few red maggots and a few caster I put it into a pole cup first just for chopping special scissors so I can chop through it. Now I don't cut it up into a mush because I'm not after little fish, I'm after big fish. So just half a dozen snips and you can see there's big meaty chunks in there. And then I'm not using the pole cup to introduce the feed because if I did I wouldn't know where it was, it would probably be in the centre of Oxford. Instead I put it into a bait dropper, this is very important how to feed correctly into the bait dropper, half full it, so there's a couple couple of loads worth that I've chopped up. Just put the door down, then I've got a cable tie on the pole. Put the line over the cable tie, wrap it around a couple of times to secure it, then connect the pole again, and ship out. What the cable tie is doing, there's no way I could ship out because the door would keep opening up every time it touched the bottom. So I tried to push it out. I'm shipping out now. You can see nice and smoothly, no jerk. So you ensure it stays around the pole. Okay, there we go. Right, we're in position. We've got the R ready with the knee and twist. Just twist in the opposite direction than the lines laying. So anti-clockwise, twist it round a few times and there we go, it's released. Swing it backwards and forwards, just steady it slightly and then down she goes. There you go, touch bottom, let it empty, give it a little twitch and straight up. There you go, empty bait dropper, and that's the way to feed in a fast river. Bring it back to hand, grab all the rest of the contents of the goo. I'm hoping a perch, or the very least, a chub, and a little bit of paper in there. Find interesting, close door round cable tie again one two that just seals it see there's no way it can open up put the pole together twist once make sure it's locked and shoot out nice and smooth it's not a race you're after big fish you know i'm not here to try and catch on a maggot i could put maggots out there and i could fish with an 18 hook but I don't really want to catch a roach. All I want is the bite off of one big fish. So there's no rush whatsoever. Just get everything right. Twist again. Out. Allow it to swing and settle. And then you've got your mark on the far bank. That's important. Lining up with the far bank. So I drop it every time in the same place. And down she goes. 
and you just feel that dunk on the pole chip as it hits bottom. If you've got it set up right, just give it a little twitch, make sure the door's open, lift up, and your worms are coming out. Well, we're coming to the best time now, um, dusk, so I'm hoping a big perch puts in an appearance. It's been very strange, um, this particular stretch that I've not, I fish, I've never not caught a two pound plus perch, and I haven't had a bite, so it just goes to show um, so-called experts don't always know what they're talking about. Um, I'm sure there isn't any fish at the moment over my feet. Um, the flat flow is so deadly, you'll always get a sign. Um, but twilight is a really good time. I don't think because it's twilight, I think it's because of light values. And um, perch really switch on as the light values start to drop, um, which is normally coincides with dusk, except in very coloured water. And then that can sometimes be, funny enough, lunchtime when enough light penetrates through and actually lifts it to the right value rather than dropping it. So don't always think it's dusk. But normally dusk is the time. So we're going to sit it out here, carry on feeding um, chop worms, see if I can draw sank. If not, switch over to chub first thing, try and get a chub and then switch back to a perch because I'm not going to give up yet. <laughs> 